this episode of American Reef, we're going to take a look at the all-in-one NP reducing bio pallets, as well as the blue fin media reactor by Triton Aquatics. So before we take a look at the all-in-one bio pallets, let's review some fundamentals for the new hobbyist. First and foremost, what are bio pallets, right? Um, again, if I'm a new hobbyist, I'm asking myself, why do I want bio pallets, right? And ultimately, um, what bio pallets are is they are a tool for managing nitrates and phosphates. Again, next question would be, why do you care about nitrates and phosphates? Well, ultimately what happens is bad things will happen to corals, right, if your nitrates and phosphates are out of control. For example, corals that, you know, rely or do heavily calcify, for example, um, you know, their growth will be heavily stunted if you have high nitrates in your tank, right? Um, and phosphates, for example, um, same thing, not only will it stunt growth, but coloration is bad, and then you'll get these unwanted kind of growths of algae, like hair algaes and things of that nature. Right. So by managing those levels, it basically allows you to have a clean tank with corals that are colorful and growing at their optimal, you know, kind of rate. And, and you know, the next question from there goes, well, what should those levels be, right? And that's the piece that kind of gets you in, you know, basically in reef keeping because people are looking for kind of a binary thing, meaning, you know, give me an exact number to keep it at, right? And, um, and you can't necessarily say that because it really depends on what kind of corals you have. For example, again, if you're relying, if you have a mainly SPS or a tank that, again, heavy coral calcification kind of stuff, um, those corals are going to want basically, you know, for nitrates, for example, basically 0.5 parts per million. Um, and if you're talking phosphates, you're talking probably 0.05, right, at the high end. Um, so, so when you look at that, it's one of those things where, you know, in that kind of SPS tank, those parameters are fine. But you take those exact same parameters and you change the corals up. Like you go with like basically, you know, mushrooms or kind of what well, they'll call like beginner kind of corals or your LPS kind of corals. Um, and, and what you'll find out is they need a little more nitrates or phosphates. They need to be heavily fed because they need a nutrient rich water. So when you look at it, you know, from a reef keeping side of it, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, it really depends on the kind of corals that you are keeping, right? And so what, what, what's funny is when you're a beginner, the first thing you'll kind of do is you'll say, well, that's fine. What I'll just do is, you know, I don't care about, you know, maybe the, the coral uh, growth, for example, and I'll keep higher nitrates. So you go to the store um, and you'll go get this SPS coral. And when you bring it in, it'll bleach up and die. And, and ultimately it'll do that because, you know, what you're trying to do is keep parameters the same, right? You're trying to match the, the parameters of the water that that coral grew up in or was being transported and that sort of thing. And so when you send it, you know, into a tank that has higher nitrates, for example, or higher phosphates, those will tend to shock that coral, right, and cause it to die. Again, some corals are hardier, etc. But, you know, that's kind of one of those gotchas where when you're in a new hobbyist, you don't kind of figure that out until later. Things just doesn't kind of pop out at you. So, you know, ultimately the idea is to manage that. And that's where, you know, again, you've heard me say many times, you know, monospecific tanks, right, focusing on a tank of, you know, Gorgonians, SPS, LPS, whatever all of that kind of focus is, it'll be easier to maintain that fish tank going that route because, again, you can match those parameters. You know, whereas in a mixed reef, you're going to have, you know, some corals that require, again, low nutrient levels where other corals require high, higher nutrient levels. And so somebody's always losing in those kind of situations. You know, it's a fine balance. Um, so from a, a, you know, from a just, you know, what that value should be, you know, take a look at your corals and then kind of go from there. Um, you know, there are several really good articles on advanced aquarists um, by, you know, some of the well-known authors out there that do a real good job at talking about phosphates and nitrates, so, you know, basically um, the detrimental effects to them, you know, or having higher levels of detrimental effects that the corals will see by having higher, higher levels, excuse me. And uh, anyway, it, there are some good sources. You, so you can go out there and check them out and you can kind of dive into that aspect a little, a little better. Um, 
So as it relates to the, uh, the bio pellets now, you know, we can use them to manage nitrates and phosphates. And basically, you know, if, if I'm a new hobbyist, I'm asking myself, well, how do they work? Well, originally, like the NP kind of reducing bio pellets, the idea was you'd basically have a media reactor where you'd put this biodegradable material in, bacteria would grow, and these bacteria would basically eat you know, the nitrates and phosphates. And, um, you know, from there, it would be exported out into a skimmer. And one of the limiting factors in the original bio pellet um, kind of design, we'll call it, is that if you had a tank where you heavily fed, for example, you would need to basically add some sort of um, phosphate absorbing media. A lot of people did it with uh, GFO, for example, granular ferric oxide. And so you'd have, you know, basically two reactors going one with bio pellets and one with GFO. And ultimately the, uh, the goal, you know, of kind of the bio pellet reactor was a set it and forget it. Um, but when you had two reactors, again, you had two things to kind of maintain. Well, basically the idea behind these all in one bio pellets is basically they took that, you know, that need for, you know, a phosphate absorbing media and they basically blended it with that biodegradable material, thus giving you an all in one bio pellet meaning that um, ultimately now the, you know, the bacteria that will grow on these things and eat these things will basically consume that, again, phosphate media as well as the bio pellet, you know, the original kind of uh, uh, biodegradable material and thus limiting or reducing or managing, whatever you want to call it, your nitrates and phosphates. So that's the idea behind here, meaning now you can have the bio pellet and you won't necessarily need any other kind of GSBO reactor. Like, and if you look at basically the literature on here, um, I believe it says that it has like 10x the phosphate removal um, that the original bio pellets had, and I believe it's 5x for the, uh, for the nitrates. So again, it's a, it's a bigger media and a more effective media to basically give you that all-in-one, so that's why you got the all-in-one name. And to me, the logic kind of sounded, you know, fairly, uh, it made sense, right? It was something that to me, hey, why not give it a try? Um, you know, so with that in mind, you look at it, and Aquarium Specialty is kind of like the, the main distributor here of the products, right? So, um, you know, if you're looking for it, like me, you can just reach out to Aquarium Specialty and, you know, they can kind of get the product over there whenever they get it in stock. Um, for me, again, I looked at it and I said, okay, well, you know, I had the bio pellets before and you can check out the previous videos from there. And again, they did a good job, but I did also need that, um, basically that, you know, uh, GFO kind of, you know, phosphate absorbing um, reactor to kind of soak up the phosphates. Um, and I was basically using the Reef Octopus uh, biopellet reactor. And I'm gonna take a pause right here because I'm gonna go get that reactor. Because what ultimately I did is I reached out to the guys at Aquarium Specialty and said, Hi, you know, do you recommend you know, any specific reactor to go with these? Because uh, the, you know, for me, the, uh, the Reef Octopus, you know, there were some things that I wanted to kind of correct, right? Because yeah, you're going to do it again, you might as well kind of correct the mistakes that you kind of see or the flaws in, in the unit, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break here and I'm going to go get that reactor and we'll talk about the differences between kind of that reactor and this one. And then we'll kind of go through installation and that sort of thing. Here's the original Reef Octopus Biopat Reactor that you've seen in all the videos. Um, again, from my end of it, one of the reasons why I originally chose this was because this little cup at the bottom here, right, it allowed for a very efficient flow, meaning it would take the water that would come down that gray tube and push it back up. So number one, you wouldn't need a huge kind of um, a pump to drive it, but number two, it kind of gave an even distribution of it. And uh, that was one of the things that originally drawn me to, or had drawn me to this particular reactor. Um, after using it for a while, there were some things that fell into that, hey, we could probably build a better mousetrap, right? And it kind of fell into three basic components. Um, the first one, number one, if we look at the actual reactor itself, let's take this top off. You can kind of see inside of it, there's this cup. Right? Well, that cup, again, was used to basically keep the media down below. Um, but after a while, 
number one, you can kind of see this mesh here. The mesh kind of loosened up a little bit, right? And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time where I would probably need to replace that. Um, so, on the next unit, I was thinking, hey, maybe something with more rigid plastic would be a better design. Uh, the other thing is, because these are kind of so fine, I noticed that it clogged up a lot more, meaning I wanted to kind of set it and forget it. Um, and I had to clean it probably every month to a month and a half or something like that. And don't get me wrong, part of that is my problem, meaning uh, pre-filtering, for example, the water that got into the reactor. Um, you know, those kind of things, because I just have it tapped off my main, cir main circulation pump. Um, but at the same time, regardless, you know, uh, it was one of those things where, you know, the, uh, as the bio pellets would break down, it would still clog this up a little more. So again, you know, this particular unit here, um, I wanted to make, again, more rigid. And I believe, like, in the newer reincarnations of the Reef Octopus, like the, the higher-end models, um, they do have that. Um, but that was one thing that I wanted to change. Second thing you'll notice, this particular tube, meaning this supplied water in here. And the idea was to, you know, set it on top of that particular kind of nipple down at the bottom. And there were two things that would happen. Number one, it didn't have kind of a guide system, so it would go down and it would go to the side. And what that mean, what that, what that would mean was basically flow would be uneven. So it would be distributed on one side, but not the other. So it wouldn't have that even kind of percolation. And then number two, the thing about it is if, you know, if you had your pump, for example, below the water surface, right, or below this up here, it would cause a back siphon. And when you look at basically the size of that tubing coming up through there um, and that sleeve, it would basically allow the bio pellets to back siphon back down into um, the maxi jet or whatever pump you were driving it. So that was another thing where I thought, okay, as far as things to change, uh, that would be probably a good thing. Uh, and then lastly, when you look at it, see this tube, you know, when you, when you got to try to, you know, when you try to put it in there, it, it's kind of cumbersome, meaning it doesn't just easily fit, right? Meaning you put it on there, but then you kind of got to play games, and then, you know, then you can finally put it in there. And, uh, and with that, it just, it was one of those things where, you know, it, it was a little more uh, difficult to, to line that up when there was bio pellets than I really wanted. Um, you know, the, the gaskets work fine on here. It has an O-ring kind of design, so I thought that was okay. Um, you know, the fact that it had all these screws sometimes was kind of a pain, um, meaning obviously we needed those screws to make sure that it was evenly distributed and it was tight, uh, but at the same time, kind of putting the, you know, the lid back on to it, sometimes, you know, getting it in there, lining all, all of them up, you know, just was a little bit of a hassle. But again, that wasn't a, a major kind of point, but that's just one point that I looked and thought, okay, you know, if we could build a better, better mousetrap, that'd be one of those things where, you know, I would enjoy it. And again, remember, these particular reactors, you have high ends and low ends, and, and this right here is more of kind of a an average reactor. It's not a high end kind of reactor. So, you know, there, I'm sure that with the Reef Octopus lines, um, you know, higher end you go, then these probably these kind of uh, issues uh, didn't exist. But then with this particular reactor here, again, Triton Aquatics, um, it was one of those things where um, it was still kind of that average media reactor, but it had a lot of little features in it that solved some of the things that I didn't like about this one. Um, you know, when you look at it, number one, taking it off the top, right, you had this big thick gasket coming across. and. Uh, and, and it's one of those things where I don't know which design is better, and we'll kind of try it out and, you know, we'll let you know. But the fact that this is thick, that this gasket is thick, I believe it's going to be more forgiving, and that if I get a piece of grain or sand or a bio pellet, something there, it's going to absorb that more and still make a watertight gasket, whereas this one here is probably less forgiving. Um, but then when you look inside there, you can see how the tube, where the water would come down through, it has this rigid flow through kind of plastic. Again, rigid meaning that, um, you know, we're not going to have to worry about it, you know, basically uh, with that mesh kind of bending, et cetera. You don't have to worry about replacing that, um, at least as often as frequent. And then number two, the way that the, the grooves are cut in there, I believe that the circulation would be such that I wouldn't have to clean it quite as much. So again, I kind of like that. When we go down to the bottom of the reactor, you'll see again, at the bottom of this, it's got this kind of T, we'll call it, but it's a nice guide so that when you put it down in there, 
bam, it goes right onto that nipple and it just fits. Right? So, you know, guiding it is one of those things where that is one of those little, little things that, again, um, should work better on this reactor than this reactor. And then lastly, when you look at um, that coned bottom, again, that cupped kind of bottom, this one had the cupped bottom. And number one, the degree of the cup was a little bit better, meaning it looked like it would throw that, you know, that actual water up a little more efficient. But number two, the, the nipple that kind of sat right in the middle there, you can see it's kind of tapered. And so as such, I'm believing that when this thing sets inside there, it's going to be such that A, when this thing, if it back siphons, it's not going to suck that media back into there. And ultimately, um, you know, there are things that you can do to prevent that with either one of these reactors. Just knowing that that exists, so it's one of those things where, again, I imagine if it's fine enough media, it will still get back siphoned because, you know, just the design of these things. But for the bio pellets, I believe that's going to, again, fall into that, eh, I think I solved the problem thing. One of the other things that I wasn't really quite looking for, um, but when I got the reactor, I kind of liked it, is you'll notice on the lid here a couple things. Um, you'll see it's basically kind of routed out, meaning there's a part in the middle here that sets up and a part that kind of basically is cut out. And to me, I noticed that difference when I put it onto the reactor itself, right? It kind of sat in there. It found a home. Um, and so putting it on was simple and easy and a little bit easier and less frustrating than, than this particular reactor. And I kind of like that. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting, again, for the outlets, again, they're screwed in and silicone on. So I thought that was pretty, pretty good, meaning that if for some reason when you put a clamp onto these things and it cracks, then, you know, you can find these at any of your local kind of stores and you just kind of unscrew it, put it back on. Whereas when you look back at your kind of reef octopus reactor, right, um, with these particular, you know, pieces and on here, they are part of the unit itself. So when you put a hose clamp on here and you break this particular, you know, um, connection, then you're going to have to basically replace this whole top piece, right? And again, it's relatively easy to take on and off, so that's not that big of a deal. But Again, this piece, finding this piece is probably going to be a lot more problematic, I meaning you're not going to find this at Lowe's, or you can probably find these in Lowe's or something like that. So uh, as far as the reactors go, I looked at, you know, what I had here, this looked like a better mousetrap per se, and uh, at the same time, uh, I believe it was around $50 uh, less than this particular reactor. So again, as far as building a better mousetrap, that kind of seems like that, you know, fits the bill. And again, what I'll do is, you know, I'll test it out and I'll let you guys know, but up front, these are some, kind of some of the things that are drawing me, at least to the, uh, to the Triton Aquatics MIDI reactor. So let's go over some specifics as it relates to the all-in-one bio pellets. First of all, let's talk about dosing. Uh, if you read on the back, you'll see basically that it's 50 to 200 ml for every 100 liters of water. Um, for those of you who want that converted into gallons, 100 liters of water translates to approximately 26 gallons. So in my particular case, since this is going to go into a 110 gallon tank, Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have, you know, four times 50 or 200, depending on how you want to dose it. Now, in my particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom end first, meaning I'm going to start at that 50 ml, right, and then start adding from there. Ultimately, you know, uh, since I have a heavier bio load, I do believe that um, I'm going to need to increase them. But remember, these things, you, you, you know, you, they are, they're either on or off. Right, and we still want to have phosphates in the water, right? Some, because again, you know, as far as coral health, etc., we don't want to drop anything quickly. So again, good things never happen fast, as we've all heard. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it slow, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 50 ml for every 26 gallons. So that means I'm going to put in around 200-ish ml. Right? Um, Let's also take a look at the difference between, we'll say, the all-in-one bio pellets and then the normal bio pellets, because you can kind of see there, you know, there's some size differences, etc. So just for some reference, this bag is actually 1,000 ml. So again, on the high end for my 110 gallon tank, I would be using approximately 80% of this bag up. Again, more for dosing, so get a feel for it. Now when you look at the bio pellets itself, if you look inside, we can kind of take a look and you can kind of see how, again, the, these pellets are 
a lot bigger, right? And obviously a different color than your normal kind of NP bio pallets. So now if we take some of them and dump them in this lid, you can kind of see the difference as it relates to kind of traditional bio pallets, right? They're probably a good two to three times their size. Um, you know, and with that being said, since they are bigger, that means it's going to take a little more flow to get these things kind of percolating in that reactor. For me, I'm going to use a Maxi Jet 1200 or the Cobalt kind of equivalent to it. Um, and we'll see how that works. I believe on the instructions on a, I think, on two liters of bio pellets, uh, basically they used something about 450 to 650 gallons per hour. Um, so again, just keep that as a reference point for me, since I'm not gonna have a whole lot to begin with, I believe that MaxiJet will do just fine. Now as for installation of the, uh, the bio pellets in this particular reactor, first thing we're gonna need ultimately is some tubing, all right? Uh, if we take a look at the tubing, basically it's half inch inside diameter, right? So you can kind of see there. Again, I picked this up uh, at Lowe's, you know, nothing special there. Um, as well, we're also going to need some kind of hose clamps, right? Again, because with these barbs, we want to make sure we clamp it down, even though there's no kind of back pressure, better safe than sorry. Uh, the other components that we'll need, measuring cup. Right. To me, a container, which what we're going to do is we are going to pre-soak these for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, so that way when we put them in there, uh, the media will actually sink to the bottom as to floating up to the top. Um, a maxi jet, again, or cobalt equivalent, because again, that will fit perfectly into this size diameter of pipe, or excuse me, flexible tubing. And lastly, we'll need some water to dump it into there. Now for me, uh, the first thing that I wanted to do actually was to take the, the bio pallets themselves, again the all-in-one bio pallets, and uh, I wanted to basically see how they would hold up if we just take them, shake them around in this container a bit. Um, because we know that the, uh, the traditioner, traditional, excuse me, bio pallets did a fairly good job, right, as far as um, holding up when, when you know you put them in and shake them around but since these are kind of again they have that um, you know that phosphate kind of uh, absorbing media included in it I just wanted to see why if I just tumble them around if they're gonna hold up or they're gonna come into kind of pieces so again 200 ml which is I'm gonna use as a starter right? you can see it's not very much right but again, just put them in this container here, which I'm going to use to actually pre-soak them. And you can get these containers at Walmart, for example. I think they're like a box, something like that. Now, let's just take them. That'll do it. Now, to me, the best way of seeing how they held up, let's just take it and we'll shake it down that way and we'll get all those little fines at the bottom and see what it looks like. Because right, you could tell I kind of racked it up a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look there, and you can kind of see they held up pretty good, right? As far as uh, any of the fines and stuff like that. I mean, there's just a little, but, you know, they didn't break apart or fall apart or anything like that. So, to me, that goes back into, in general, it seems to be like a durable media. So, that's, again, that's what we're looking for, right? So, now, with that said, basically, now, what we'll do is we'll just add some water. And, you know, we'll let these things... Uh, and so, again, I'm using RODI, so don't be fooled by the smart water bottle, right? It's just a bottle, right? So again, we'll just add some water into there. And then what we will do, shake it up a little bit. And again, as we shake it up, it's kind of one of those things where it's just to see how dirty the media is. Because, you know, like when you have GFO or, you know, your different kind of carbons, um, usually it will become relatively uh, dirty when you're mixing it up. So when you look at here, let's just take a look. And again, you can kind of see some of the smaller particles, but it's not that big of a deal. And again, you can see how it floats, right? So the idea is let's let this set for about 24 to 48 hours, then I will come back. We'll actually uh, put it in the, uh, the actual reactor itself. We'll go over to the, uh, the demo tank, right? And we'll fire it up a little bit and we'll kind of show the flow and see what it takes from that maxi jet. And uh, then we'll wrap it up. So, see you in 24 hours.
So it's been about 24 hours. As you can see here, the all-in-one bio pellets, again, they all settle to the bottom, so nothing's floating. So now it's just a matter of actually assembling the reactor. Um, to do that, it's gonna be relatively simple, right? We're gonna take basically the reactor itself, right? And what we wanna do is basically cut some flexible tubing for our A supply and B return. Now for me, I'm gonna keep the, uh, the uh, actual supply relatively short. Right. And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, actually take a piece here. And again, I like the uh, I like this kind of black flexible tubing, at least for this reactor, because it sits on really easy. Now, the problem with this kind of tubing is you'll get these kind of kinks. Right. So to get these kinks out, you're going to have to heat this up. Right, uh, either um, with boiling hot water, steam, whatever you want to call it, and that will basically get these kind of kinks out of it. But I like it again just because black matches reactor, and then for me it fits on really easy under there. So what we'll do is take, and, uh, and again I'm just going to cut something relatively small, short, meaning this right here is going to be the supply. So I'll take and cut that off. Uh, and again, nothing huge, but again, enough so I can actually put the uh, maxi jet in the same chamber. And again, this uh, this first actual inlet here will be the one to uh, to apply to supply water to it. Now I'm not going to use the hose clamps, but again, if you're going to put this on a real reactor per se and in its final resting place, you want to put your hose clamp on first. Again, you just slide it into place, and lock it down. That simple, right? Again, now I'm not going to be using the clamps, but uh, in general, uh, that's, you know, you want to put one on each end. And then from here, again, we've got our maxi jet, and it's going to be relatively simple, right? It, with this half inch inside diameter, it's really easy, right, onto this maxi jet, and it'll do a good job supplying water to the reactor. Now as it relates to actually the uh, effluent or the line that's going to come out of here for the water that's been processed, uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one long, right? Because what we want to do is we want to take this and we're either going to put it into some kind of filter sponge or we're going to place it to a skimmer. So I want some extra length basically on this external one. Again, so from a length standpoint, uh, probably go double, maybe triple because I, my tank is about four foot. So uh, again, I want enough. I want enough tubing here, so basically I can uh, uh, gives me options, I should say. So I can place it, you know, near the skimmer or near, you know, a filter sock or anywhere I want to put it. But again, having enough tubing here will allow me to do that. Again, same kind of thing. It's going to go under there. Relatively simple. And again, another reminder, if you're using hose clamps, you want to clamp them onto there. So again, nothing special as it relates to assembling of the pump water feed kind of uh, component of it. And as far as actually putting the, uh, the media in the reactor itself, let's uh, give it a go here. Again, should be relatively simple. We pull it out. And from there, just dump these in. Okay, make it a little simple, we'll just dump a little more water in here. And luckily again, there's not a whole lot of pallets that I'm going to be using. Um, so, this makes it a little bit easier. And one final one should do it. go. So we've got that. Now let's take and uh, let's see if the uh, it actually sets in a lot easier than the uh, the other one. So you just again put it down in there. And again we can kind of see that little guide really makes a big difference right because it's kind of already in place. So uh, the one thing that I was looking for this reactor to do is to again make sure that that center supply line gets centered and it's doing a pretty good job of that. Lastly we just want to close it right. All we want to do is make sure again that on the seal or the gasket 
there's, uh, there's no kind of little particles or fines. And uh, from there, let's just kind of put it on, lock it in, screw it down. Again, the idea when we screw it down, just like on the other one, what we want to do is we want to make sure to basically screw down uh, evenly or consistently, I should say, on all screws. I mean, you don't want to jam one screw in and then go to the other ones. You want to kind of evenly distribute the load where possible. And as you can see, that's it, right? Nothing special to it. Uh, let's take this bad boy over to one of our test tanks and uh, let's experiment a little bit and see if the flow's too much, which I believe it will be because there's not a whole lot of media down here. Um, and uh, let's just kind of take a look at it in action. So here I am in front of the demo tank and uh, in general, one of the things that I have been doing um, is before I put new equipment into the tank, I like to test it first, right? It's one of these kind of things that I just kind of stumbled across that made a lot of sense to me, meaning that, you know, if if maxi, power, maxi jet power heads fail or it leaks or something like that, I'd rather fuss with it here than basically in my main room. And it's easier to kind of manipulate that sort of thing. So uh, this is going to be no different. Uh, what we'll do is basically we'll let this thing run for about a week. Um, and I'm going to cut this video off actually after this particular section, meaning that what we'll do is we'll kind of have a part two, meaning that after I let this thing run for a week or so, um, what I'll do is basically do some video of me kind of installing it in the tank so you can kind of see what that tank looks like. And then what we'll do is we'll give it a four to six week kind of period where I either, you know, have to add some, you know, more bio pellets to, to again kick up the filtration uh, or whatever. But we'll kind of do a, a, a check in at that point to see how everything's going and just kind of see the reactions to the corals, that sort of thing. Um, so with that being said, for this particular uh, reactor here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this big long tube because, you know, number one, we don't need it, right? Um, you know, for this little tank here, we'll just actually take and, uh, and put a little tube in. And, uh, you know, again, good thing I didn't use hose clamps, per se. Um, so you can kind of see it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, other than that, as we know, it's relatively simple. You know, it works like basically every, every other kind of fluid, fluidized media reactor, meaning water's gonna come through in, down this tube, basically percolate the media, and we'll kind of go from there. Just plug it in to give you an idea what things look like. As you can kind of see again, uh, just as far as this particular uh, maxi jet and this amount of media, it, to me it looks to be about right, right? It's not so chaotic that, um, you know, again, the, the media is actually flying up to the top, but at the same time, it's keeping it percolating here just like we like to. So uh, to that point, I think what we'll do is we'll kind of let this run for a while and uh, like I said, uh, see what kind of effects we get from the all-in-one bio pellets. So let's wrap this thing up. Basically, we talked about using the all-in-one bio pellets today to manage nitrates and phosphates in your aquarium. Um, the manufacturer claims that you'll see 10x to 20x times more phosphate removal and 5x nitrate removal using basically the all-in-one biopellets. Um, again, for me, I decided to use them right in a Triton Aquatics bluefin reactor. Uh, the rationale behind that, again, it, for that particular reactor, basically this reef octopus had some shortcomings, right, that I wanted to kind of overcome, and that bluefin kind of fit the bill. Um, Ultimately, you know, again, these are all claims by manufacturers, this, that, and the other, but the only thing that will prove these things to be either true or false will be time. That's why what we're going to do is we're going to take a part two to this video, which basically will be kind of that six-week look, right? How do things look after six weeks? And we'll kind of take a look at the tank beforehand and afterhand. Uh, the one thing that I will do different is uh, I will make sure that when I actually install that reactor, I'm going to take and actually put it and feed it into a skimmer or a normal kind of filter sponge, right, uh, to help collect the excess kind of bacteria that's coming out of that reactor. So if you're interested in trying out these new all-in-one bio pellets, uh, go to AquariumSpecialty.com. They are the sole distributor of the Reef Interest products. And again, you can find them at www.AquariumSpecialty.com. Uh, again, my name is Russ Kickle, and thanks for watching this episode of American Reef.